Yes, yes, he wants that on CD for Christmas. Yes, get him the CD, okay? What's that? AQCD? XRCD? You're, I think, I think you're breaking up. SHMCD? What the heck is that? Crystal Disc? What are you talking about? Okay, guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. So today, in this episode, we are going to explore the current different types of compact discs. Yes, the main ones that are still here, that we can still buy, and try to understand what are the different sonics. By description, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the materials, the production process, and also for each type, we're also going to make a comparison. A normal CD and the special version, okay? Are you ready? Let's dive in. Okay, guys, let's jump immediately in our first type, the SHM CD the super high material CD, compact disc. Actually, this is a little old respect to the others because it was introduced in 2007 by JVC. Nevertheless, this is widely still currently adopted. Hence, I wanted to talk about it. So this is probably the worst of the ones we're gonna explore today. And a few of these, I've already done a few dedicated videos. So I'll tell you when this is so, illustrating you a link, okay? In any case, let's go back to our SHMCD. And they use, they claim to be using uh, a better type of polycarbonate, highly reflective, and with just a better type of formula which brings a better definition of the pits. And these elements are pra practically going to be a constant in all the types of manufacturing we're going to explore today. In any case, these, were, these techniques were both developed by JVC. And I must admit that JVC, when they do something, I tend to trust them. I tend to take a look at what is the, non the novelty. Also because they are responsible for the fantastic XRCD. Might as well explore in two, in two words the XRCD. I already done a dedicated video to XRCD. Here is a link. You're going to find all the links in the video description. And the XRCD is all about the mastering, but also manufacturing process. Take a look to that video because also XRCD are uh, broadly present. XRCD2, XRCD24, different types. In that video, you'll find everything. So, uh, what else do we have connected going back to our XHMCD? Well, uh, apart from that, they also claim that there is a much lower jitter due to these high quality materials. And also, they have a reduced birefringens. I hope I, I said this correctly. I know how to say it in Italian. Birifringenza, but not in English. So sorry if I mistake some a few of these words. Because according to them, there is this effect when reading CDs. Uh, a, a double ray of light, a special type of light, um, is created. And in this case, this is reduced because it brings some mistakes, some errors. Also, the process, according to JVC, they have uh, higher quality stampers. And the injection molding is better overall. Because remember that CDs are stamped. A lot of people tend to forget this. And that is why sometimes the quality isn't that good. In fact, I want to say this. I actually would like to do a video in the future. Uh, a lot of people claim, and I understand that, that it's better to burn CDs with high quality CDs, the high quality signal, high quality mastering, uh, reader, gizmo. So at that point, you're going to have a very high quality copy. Better, they say, than something stamped. Because even though they use these glass molds, after a while they do wear, wear out. 
Hence, the later ones are going to be worse than the first ones, just like uh, vinyl, actually. Okay, guys. So uh, let's try to take a look now, try to listen to something to, to try to compare the SHMCD. Now, I've tried to find the same mastering, more or less, even though, as we will see also in further um, coming up ahead examples, even if I'm sure it's the same mastering engineer and master, they change things. They change things for versions. It's always like that, unfortunately. So let's compare this fantastic album by David Grusin, one of a kind. This is a 1978 album. I have the original on CD. This was a digital master. And I also have here, as you can see, I think. Here it is, coming from Japan, the SHM CD. And I've noticed that even though these are quite distant from each other, because this is probably coming just, it's just been released. I mean, the last year, two years ago. So there is like um, 30 or 40 years between these two because the recording clearly is from 78, but the CD here is from 84, okay? And this is probably in 2023, 22, something like that. I can already say that comparing the two sound waves, it is clear that they have the same identical mastering, okay? I also explored and analyzed the perceived loudness, trying to see if there are some differences. So in this case, even though it does, there isn't some in, any indication, and this is a different version, since it's a HMCD, there could have been a different master, but it's not the case, okay? I'm pretty sure it's the same. Let's try to listen now to the two tracks. I'm not going to tell you each time which is which, okay? Put on your headphones. It's much better. All these are bit accurate rips from the different CDs, okay? I tried to do my best to preserve the quality of, e of each rip with correct software, which has its log and describes if there were, there were any problems. So everything you're going to listen is done correctly. I had to normalize the loudness always for the two versions. I had to do this to make sure there aren't differences from that point of view. Nevertheless, I'm going to put all the files for download in the video description. You're going to find the normalized and normal versions, let's say. Okay, so you can do your own comparisons on your system. Okay, let's start with track one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, guys, are you ready? So track one was the SHM CD. And obviously track two was the normal CD. Now, this is a very high quality album, okay? It's an audiophile album, like all the records from GRP, usually master or digital masters, but not only. GRP is from David Grusin and Larry Rosen, and they do excellent albums. So this should help. I will give you my take at the end, okay? Once we have explored the different CDs, the different types. <clears throat> Let's proceed now to our second one. Okay, very quickly now. The next one is the same identical concept, the SHM CD, but it's the platinum version. In fact, here we have an example. All stuff coming from Japan. And if you are in Japan, they cost much, much, much less. If you try to import them or if you buy them around, they are extremely expensive. Also because, as you can imagine, instead of the aluminum or aluminum a layer for the reflectivity, they use platinum. Well, as you can imagine, it's very expensive. So it's the same concept, JVC, but done with a platinum layer. Oh, I forgot to say, one is obviously the platinum version, the other is gonna be the original first Version, well, one of the first CD versions because this is from exactly 1995. No, not, not one of the main, the first ones actually. In any case, a soft master. And once again, comparing the waves, the sound waves, as you will see in the future, I do not see that, that much of, di of a difference, okay? So I think more or less we have the same master. Let's listen. <laughs> Okay, guys, so track one was, in this case, the normal CD, and track two was the platinum CD, the SHHM CD, platinum one, okay? Here is the uh, sound wave, as you can see, just to have a quick comparison. And let's jump immediately, proceed to our third type. Our next type is the blue spec CD. This was introduced by Sony in 2008, quite late. In fact, we're going to concentrate on the evolution of this. The Blue Spec CD2, which sometimes you're going to find written BSCD2 altogether. And this was released in 2012 and is currently produced. We can find it for various releases, okay? The materials. Well, Sony uses a very high quality polymer polycarbonate 
to create this this type of CD, which is inherited by the blue ray production okay now most of the technology of these blue specs cds comes actually from the blu-ray technology okay the manufacturing process i'm gonna read my notes because there, there's a lot to say and i want to be precise on this so they use a stamper which is cut with blue ray technology once again the blue laser diode for very precise pits they say they claim 20 times more than a normal CD in the blue spec CD2. Okay, we're talking about two now, which is called the phase transition mastering. Okay, they use silicon wafers for semiconductor manufacturing, which results in a smoother surface. Actually, the roughness is reduced all the way down to one sixth of what was a normal CD. So very, very flat, very, very smooth, which helps in the definition of the pits and the reflectivity, et cetera, et cetera. The recording layer of the master shifts. Okay, we're moving from optical, which is photoresist, to thermal, oxide resist. And they say that this kills jitter. It reduces it by 50%, which is a lot. And this is where they record the, the, the recording layer. So there's a lot going on with the blue spec CD. Now let's take a look to a sample. We have Santana Caravanserai. In this case, I'm sure we have the same identical mastering because we have a 2003 edition mastered by Vic Anesini. We have the BSCD2, I think you can see it. I also have the part inside. So you can see all Japanese, although these are much more easy to find, I must admit, and the normal 2003 CD edition. Okay, now this is a perfect example where I was very happy because I said, hey, it's the same mastering, the same edition. They just changed the support. No, it's not like that. Darn it. I can't believe it. The um, Blue Spec CD2 actually has much more uh, volume to it, okay? It's actually a little cut. It's a little compressed. It's a little squished. You'll see the, the sound wave after. Let's try to see if you can hear a difference. Let's proceed with the test. Okay, so track number one was the blue spec CD2. Track number two was the normal CD. As you can see from the sound wave, we have a big difference, unfortunately. 
What you have just heard obviously was, once again, I already said this uh, a few minutes ago, normalized. The perceived loudness was normalized. So you do not have any difference from that point of view. Obviously, write in the comments if you can sense difference between these different editions, these different versions, these different supports, media. I will give you my opinion once again at the end. Let's proceed to the next type. Our next type is the ultimate high quality CD, which is one of the most interesting, I think, that we have today. When you want to get a good version of a CD, you, we usually, I think, most people head for the UHQ CD if it exists. This was introduced quite recently in 2015 by MTC, Memory Tech Corporation. Now, I once again, I want to read you a few things, okay? So I will be more precise. And these come, although a lot of people may don't, maybe they don't remember it, they come, there are an evolution of the high quality CD and high quality CD2, HQCD, HQCD2, okay? They have this uh, experience, which all in the, in the end resulted in the uh, uh, ultimate high quality CD. Okay, so they say for the materials, the substrate, they use a high transparency and high fluidity polycarbonate. For the reflect, the reflective layer was replaced with the low cost aluminum, which is usually adopted in all these types except for the platinum one, with a unique and very expensive alloy of high reflectivity, which obviously it's proprietary and they're not going to tell you what's in, what is made of. Mm. Manufacturing process. Instead of injection molding, which is what is used in all the, uh, the ones we've seen up until now, okay, of polycarbonate, what do they do? Uh, since they say, they claim that when you do injection molding, the polycarbonate does not go in all the little micro pits, okay? It's not very precise. That's why they use a photopolymer, that are, which is liquid. It, it, at its natural state, it's liquid. Maybe some of you know what, what I'm talking about. I know it because they use it also to recreate your teeth. So they put it. They, they, they put it and then they use a special light and it makes it really hard. This is the same thing, this photopolymer, which is liquid. It penetrates perfectly in all the pits and then it's exposed to a specific light and uh, uh, specific wavelengths and it becomes very, very hard. So that, I must admit, is an excellent idea. So now you've been seeing a little bit of specs in these images. And I want to bring your attention to what they claim being a very, very positive radial and tangential pit shape and transfer rate accuracy. As you can see, compared to normal CDs, uh, quite, quite good. And in fact, I must admit that these are very present among audiophile collectors. So for our test, we are going to say, once again, I found the same master, mastering at least should be, of OK Computer. This is the OK Not OK version, 1997-2017. It came out. There's lots of more songs. Obviously, if you don't know this album, rip your computer off of you and run to the shop and buy a copy of OK Computer. In my opinion, the best album of Radiohead and one of the best rock albums that we have out there. Yes, for me, I just love this album. So since I have it a lot in my mind, and I'm sure a lot of you do as well, it, it sounded like a good comparison. I know a lot of people are going to say all these comparisons are done on pretty simple music, except for the platinum version of the SHMCD, which was jazz. The rest is rock. But I mean, yes, why? Do we always have to go to special jazz, chamber music, classical music. Maybe you could you could sense more there. That's true. But I want to hear the difference also on these types because actually people are buying especially these types, okay? So I want to sense a difference also in normal rock. If you don't, that means maybe the impact isn't that strong. But we'll get to that. Okay, so we have this version and I am sure it is also the same version of this one 
which is still the okay, not okay version from the original master tapes, blah, blah, blah. It's the same mastering, okay? This is the, uh, I think you can see here, the ultimate high quality version. I think you can see it. In any case, as you can see, it differs from this one a little bit, but it's the same type of mastering. And in fact, as you will see after from the sound waves, there are practically, I would say, if not completely identical. And it was quite impressive, I'm going to tell you already from this, from, from this point here, that both editions are very, very compressed. In fact, I also wanted to check my original version, which I got in, the, in 1997, in the normal first CD edition. And also this one is extremely compressed. All the peaks are, are cut off. So not a great recording from that point of view, but it's normal. And we know, we know what, that was something already uh, greatly done in the 90s, the loudness war and all the different problems connected to that. Okay, let's jump to the test. Go. <laughs> Okay, guys, so the first track was the ultimate high quality CD. Yes, and the second one clearly was the normal CD. Here, as you can see, are the two sound waves. Not much of a difference. Uh, once again, I invite you to download all the files and do your own research because there are differences, okay? All of these, they're not perfectly identical. There are differences in the different peaks. So there is a different result. That is objective, 100% true. It is not the identical file. Since I'm doing an accurate rip, I'm not even converting. So one could say, no, it's your gear that is changing. No, apart from the gear would introduce the same difference on all files. But apart from that, I'm just ripping stuff, okay? So it should be identical. And it's not. We have to say this. Doesn't have an effect on the audio. I'll once again tell you my opinion afterwards. Let you grab your uh, keyboard and start writing. Okay. At this point, let's start to go towards our last type. Okay. Our next type is the crystal disc. Now, this is an elite product, okay? It's not a consumer product. In any case, I did want it to insert it. I don't have them. We're not going to do a test. I, I'm sorry. They're, they're, go, they're going from $1 to $2,000 for a CD. No, I can find a, a good quality copy of the master tape if we're talking about reissues at a, at a lower price. So not for me. But I want to signal this, okay? Now, this is a very high quality product, obviously. 
developed by, again, by MTC, Memory Tech Corporation. And it combines a little bit of the quality uh, materials and processing of the above. But what are the difference? Well, it uses a glass substrate, okay, instead of the polycarbonate. And the reflective layer is made out of gold. So the price is somehow justified. Not only it's very difficult and they have to do one by one, but it also has high quality materials, very expensive. And again, they use the photopolymerization as the UHQCD, the one we explored above, okay? I'm sorry, I don't have a test disk. Another one, which we're not gonna explore with a test, is quite available, quite present, the next type, which is the MQACD type. I actually do have one. It's buried behind my speaker, trust me. I have a Super Tramp CD. And I did experiment uh, trying to, to hear the normal CD version and the MQA version, but I lost all my interest when finally MQA was revealed being a lossy type of format, okay? You do not have the full bandwidth. It is compressed. So not that interesting at all. Nevertheless, if you use a, a MQA decoder with those CDs, those green CDs, and you have the full unfolding of the origami, which is the type of compression they have because MQA has a different steps of compression, as most of you know. And this one can go, not necessarily it is, but it can go all the way up to 352.8 kilohertz by 24 bits of resolution. Wow, a lot. Nevertheless, it is still MQA. So you're doing this extremely high frequency rate and high bit uh, resolution with uh, something compressed. It's, I think it's just plain stupid. In any case, I remember having, when I, when I did have my, uh, an MQA converter, then I got rid of it. And the, the differences weren't that amazing, I must admit. Nothing special. There was there was a difference, clearly. I mean, if you're having a 4416 compared to a 352-24, in most cases, you do going to sense a difference. What else did we explore on this channel that I want to mention? The 8Q CD, the Analog Quality CD, here, again, developed by MTC. Here is a link. Once again, all links are in the video description. And also one of my favorites I want to mention here, the HDCD, okay, developed by Professor Keith Johnson with Pacific Microsonics back in the 90s, uh, and then now practically adopted only in reference recordings. But wow, uh, also the normal CD version on there is perfectly fantastic. It actually benefits from the, the processing, even though you do need a special chip to use the HDCD while all the rest of the other CDs that we have explored here are normal Red Book CDs, okay? I should have said this in the beginning, but I think it's obvious. They just changed the materials, the production quality and processing, the quality of the processing itself. Hence, you just need a normal CD to play all of these. Not, not the HD CD. In any case, here is a link to that video if you want to know more because that is one of my favorite formats. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we've reached the end. I want to tell you a few uh, thoughts that I uh, gathered while creating this video. Now, as you can imagine, I did a lot of listening sessions on my system and then with the loudness, uh, perceived loudness normalized with my headphones. Now, I must admit that when I listen to my to this stuff on my system, in some cases, I did sense a difference. Now, for Santana, there was a big volume difference. So, unfortunately, you cannot sense anything when you have that big difference. But when I did my listening with my headphones at the, uh, the same volume, I must admit that the differences were practically unnoticeable. Like all these, it was shocking. Oh, practically, with my headphones, with the rips, I, I sense barely anything, if not anything, in all of these. I'm sorry to say. 
on my system when you have the same mastering like the OK Computer or the, um, the David Grusin CD. There was a little difference, minuscule difference. But I mean, if somebody would have done a blind test, I probably would fail. So very, very, very small. And I'm sure they're doing all the things they, they claim they're, they're doing, the high quality materials, the processing. But I guess the, the, the overall conclusion of this is that it is not that important. The normal CD already gave a lot. What is very important, and that's why, for example, the XRCD are very good, is the mastering once again. That is the key. Obviously, the recording, that's the first part. But if you do a special, very well done, uh, not compressed, uh, I don't know. You, you really ha know what, you have, what you're doing, like JVC for the XRCD. The results are astonishing. There is a huge difference from a normal CD and an XRCD. The old ones, okay? Forget the new ones. I don't know what they're doing with the new ones, but they're terrible. I also have all the... What are they called? The audio wave versions of the Blue Note uh, records. I have a lot of them right there. There's practically no difference with the normal CD. I'm sorry, to say, I have to say this. Instead, if you get the older versions of the XR CDs where the mastering was done by JVC with the original master tapes with all their technology, the special chain they have back in the 90s and early 2000s, they were fabulous. In fact, still today on eBay, they're very expensive. In that case, when you have a good mastering, very well done mastering, the differences are very audible. I love those, but in terms of materials, because in the in these last formats that we have, they're pumping, they're pushing a lot on the materials and the processing. Unfortunately, the results are so minuscule, if present, that there is no there is no sense in spending so much in producing them and in purchase purchasing them from our point of view, from our point as a consumer. I'm sorry, uh, it was just. When I finally listened to everything, uh, I thought I would have discovered much more resolution, much more differences, but it's just not there, unfortunately. The only thing I can say is that the Blue Spec CD2 of Japanese jazz versions coming from the 60s and 70s are excellent, but I think they're just doing everything nicely. They're doing a new master, and that's why they're so good but it's not the medium. And I think this test that we've done today together practically demonstrate this. Thank you again for watching. Please leave your comments. I'm very interested. And other, also, if you have other versions, for example, if some of you have tried, I'm sure some of you did, the Crystal Disc. We're very interested in that. Thank you again for watching. And remember that, apart from all of this, music is born analog. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.